Today in social psychology, we're going to talk about the big ideas of social psychology. So basically we're talking about what are the current major themes in terms of social psychological research. So, so the big ideas of social psychology as of 2021. First is that we construct our own reality. So in terms of thinking that reality is one thing that exists for everyone, this would be incorrect because of the fact that we perceive the world based upon our previous experiences, based upon um, our expectations. So all of those things are going to influence what we perceive, we as an individual perceive as reality our reality. My reality may be different from your reality. And we need to keep that in mind when we're interacting with people and also when we're trying to understand other people's behaviors. So the second thing we want to think about is the idea of intuition. So that gut response that we have to things, to people, um, we think or are our intuitions about social situations can be very powerful, meaning that um, they can influence how we treat others, uh, the behaviors that we, we, we exhibit, things like that. Um, but sometimes because of those intuitions or those gut feelings or those beliefs that we have, um, they can also cause problems for us and for other people. Um, one example of a social intuition is the idea of hindsight bias or the what idea of what we call the I knew it all along phenomenon. Um, so when people say things such as um, I knew that when President Trump lost the election that there would be civil unrest. Nobody actually 100% knew that. Even social psychologists were surprised by some of the behaviors of humans after President Trump lost the election. So this is what we call hindsight bias. We always joke that hindsight bias is 2020, meaning that when you look back and make a prediction of what was supposed to happen, you're always 100% correct because you already know what happened. So that's an example of hindsight bias. Another big idea of social psychology right now is that social influences shape our behavior. So social influences can be anything from your best friend telling you about a new restaurant and you wanting to try it because you appreciate their opinion. It can be um, people on the internet making statements about certain things that influence you to behave in certain ways. It can be about uh, advertisements. It can be um, about how uh, interpersonal communication influences people to change their behaviors. Um, so we can give examples of, you know, through talking to people, um, we can change their voting behaviors. We can encourage people to vote more. So that would be an example of social influencing, shaping behaviors. We also know that our personal attitudes, attitudes being positive or negative evaluations of a person, place, or thing, and our disposition, so personality traits, also shape behavior. So not only do other people and what they're doing shape our behavior, but our own personal attitudes, which actually, as we'll find through this semester, have been shaped by influences from other people, and dispossession, dispositions, our personality traits and characteristics um, will shape our behavior as well. One thing that we need to keep in mind as social psychologists is that our focus is more on the social influences that shape behavior than it is on the internal dispositions such as personality, okay? So internal dispositions, meaning things inside the self, external attributions, meaning things outside of the self, such as uh, traffic, influenced me to become frustrated this morning. I'm not just an angry person, okay? Uh, we also know that social behavior is biologically rooted. Um, so we will uh, we'll talk some this semester about uh, social neuroscience. This is where we take social psychology, so studying how the presence of others influences the individual. And we will apply neuroscience to that so that we can actually look at Okay, when people experience the emotion of love or disgust with another person, where does that where is that going on in the brain? So we can use fMRI scans to look at how people how people's brains 
are influenced by social behavior. So we know that social behavior is going to be biologically rooted in that um, we experience higher levels of oxytocin when we interact with others um, positively in a face-to-face -face environment. So we can see that our social behaviors and biology are not you know, two things separate, but they are more um, two things that seem separate, but are definitely connected. Um, and then the final big idea of social psychology is that social psychology is literally everywhere and it's applicable to everyday life. Um, so one of the examples I typically give in my face-to-face -face classes is I ask people, okay, how many people showered this morning before they came to class or showered last night? And so almost the whole class raises their hand and I say, okay, why? Why would you shower? Um, and some people will say, well, I didn't want to smell. And the thing is, typically humans cannot smell themselves after until after a few days. So really, um, does the typical human need to shower every single day? No, but usually we're doing it to either impress other people or to make sure that other people don't think of us as like the stinky person. So again, this is an inherently social behavior in that we are showering so that other people don't think badly of us rather than because we have a biological need to shower. Okay, so um, we can think of lots of other examples. Um, you know, why do people socialize? Uh, in terms of the pandemic, we can think of, you know, uh, why has the number of people experiencing depression and anxiety risen um, since March of 2020, and one of the reasons for that is due to lack of in-person, face-to-face social interaction. Um, so, as I said before, and this is actual research evidence that increased levels of oxytocin are released. Oxytocin makes brain happy, makes brain feel loved, makes brain feel, um, you know, surrounded by um, positive feelings. And so decreased levels of oxytocin are released when we're interacting with people in ways that aren't in face-to-face. -face. Um, so you can see how the pandemic has influenced people's social behaviors, which has then influenced their brains, which has then influenced the presence of um, a depression and anxiety type behaviors in cognition. Okay, so our next topic is going to be how our personal values, the things that we think are important or not important, are going to influence social psychology. If you have questions or examples of the big ideas, please feel free to put those in the comment section. I would love to hear your examples. Thanks.